So we're going to upload this to the decentralized cloud. And then we can use this file. So let's copy this file. Uh, run up link. CP for copy. Uh, copy that file. And then throw it in uh, the ECC bucket that we're going to Okay, so we can see how quick this is going to be uh, running this through with the mic. It's obviously not going to be too bad. So that's how we're going to do that. Thank you. 
So even our crappy Wi-Fi conference Wi-Fi, you can see how fast that part of it starts to play. And part of the reason it's able to do that is because essentially when Kevin skipped ahead, what his laptop did was connect to a few set of nodes and start downloading data from each of those nodes. And then once he has enough data to reconstruct the file at that exact point uh, where he's working or he skipped ahead, then it starts streaming on that. So we don't have to download the entire file before we start streaming it. Like YouTube, right? You can just start streaming it from anywhere. You know, you just start downloading a specific array or the data and then reconstruct it and start streaming it out around the same kind of nodes. And, you know, it, this is really crappy Wi Fi. It's almost a little faster. But it's still not bad, right? And then when you look at, like, just, I mean, this is a 4K video streaming in the conference, and we're downloading data from, you know, at least 80 nodes at a time, but the actual file is split up and stored on 10,000 different nodes around the world. So it just, it just goes bigger and bigger. It's pretty, it's pretty exciting, I would say. It only has a small piece of that file, so it's not like any other has a big copy of the data. Each node has an encrypted erasure code piece, and you're just sending that one to data, and that's all getting that one to data that it out. So the last thing that I wanted to show everybody really quickly was how we can uh, reconfigure the AWS command line. I'm going to talk to Scourge. I like to say Trevi AWS to talk to the decentralized cloud. So let's go ahead and begin walking through that. If we go to the, the storage dashboard here, we can see we generated an access grant, which is that client side access for storage. You can also generate an S3 gateway credentials. And so this, by doing this, you're opting on a server side encryption on the S3 gateway. Cool to do that because we just want to use it easy. So let's do that. Let's grab these credentials. We get the AWS access key, secret key, and endpoint. Now let's go back to our command line here, the AWS command line. So it's all, yeah, so let's put that one on the AWS configure. And we're going to put it in this access key, the secret key at this endpoint. So let's plug in this access key. The secret key. So now we should be talking to the uh, decentralized cloud uh, for AWS. We'll text edit. Uh, we're actually going to the docs here. Uh, and again, Storage is a really robust documentation. You can quick start guides for all the platform developers. And we have walkthroughs, critical use cases for storage. So if you wanted to say back up your MongoDB database, use files to look for FTP, store your Tesla data, and maybe just be on the, uh, the autonomous car at the village and you want to push that data to a decentralized cloud instead of AWS, you can do that too. So let's go to the S3 CLI. So we generated these credentials, configured the AWS talk to storage. Now let's make it uh, a bucket. So we're going to show the AWS endpoint that we're going to put Bucket limit, so we can use it. We take a bucket, call it. Yeah, it's going to draw a little bit here. Uh, what we can do is we can also display all the buckets. Now, last, we can do us. Buckets, so we can do, we can see all the buckets in the storage through the AWS command line as well. We can configure the AWS command line so we can see all of our buckets are, are here. And uh, let's upload a different file. Now we're going to upload a picture of our founder, John Wilkinson, showing the rainbow. Very good meeting material. So let's copy that. Uh, to the decentralized file using the AWS command line. So 
like traffic and the more data that we store, the better it is for mobile players because essentially the resources are just getting the ones that are. So, especially on the Vanguard front, we have a couple of use cases that can potentially go over the next pool of solution. There are mostly larger piles, and when those, when those larger piles get downloaded really frequently from you know, random people around the world, that's where the node paths really just start to go through the roof. Yeah, so the question was, is there a gas cost of hanging out the node operators? There absolutely is. We pay out node operators once per month, and we spend, you know, a few weeks every time we do it. We are adopting, um, yeah, we use ZK systems, ZK rollups to make it easier for node operators who want to get paid out. And then the other caveat that we have for our node operators is that we have a little more payout amount, and it depends on the actual gas speed. So the transaction costs are really high, and it's going to cost us, you know, five bucks to send you a transaction. Well, then we're not going to send someone a transaction for five bucks or for four bucks, even if it costs us five bucks. So the way that we pay the node operators on the network and what the actual customers pay are different. So customers pay four dollars a terabyte for storage per month, which is if you, yeah, the, the cost of the customer is fixed. Um, and then they pay $7 a terabyte for egress. Um, if you compare that to AWS, it, AWS charges you $20 a terabyte for a single region storage, or four. And AWS charges you uh, $45 a terabyte for egress, or seven. So I mean, those numbers don't lie. We're also, uh, also multi-region by default. On AWS, that double for trains are possible. So the question was, can you specify what location you want your data stored on the storage PCS? The answer is right now you can't. Uh, right now we distribute the pieces across the globe by default, but we are working on a feature that will allow you to select specific regions. Uh, part of the reason we didn't implement this before is because we needed our network to get to a certain maturity so that we would have, for a fact, enough nodes in that area to store a certain amount of data, right? So I think that feature will probably come like in the middle of next year, but right now we don't support that. And part of the other thing is like, it's actually less, I wouldn't say it's zero. It's better to store your data. I mean, obviously, if you're using case for like a DoD or something like that, you don't want to right there. But in general, if you don't have those kinds of requirements, it's better to store your data on a cross platform network because our network is made up of nodes that are statistically unfolded. They're random. Random people around the world on different ISPs, different hardware, different software, different hardware life cycles, like some of them are some of them are brand new some of them are hard drives. So the, the basically it yeah, makes your data more durable and it's sort of across the globe on all of those. And we have we have eleven kinds of durability, so we lose our lost file. We'll never lose a file, so just that we're speaking. So so the best the next question was I've been running a for six months and my utilization is up two percent. Utilization will go up and 